and um, I think we'll kick this off. Um, welcome everyone. Um, this is Diane Keough. Uh, Mike Mendez is, uh, will be presenting um, today, um, talking about installing and upgrading I2B2. Um, I will let uh, Mike take it away. Okay, so welcome everyone. So, um, so today I'm gonna go brief, uh, go over a couple of PowerPoint presentations about like where the software is, what's required, and uh, where you can get it. And then I'm gonna actually show an installation of the 1709, which was our previous version. And then I'm gonna do a quick upgrade to the 1710, which just got released a couple of weeks ago. So I'll give you an idea of how to install the software and how to upgrade it. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, so the software location. So there's two locations. Uh, Everything can be uh, found the wwi2b2.org slash software page, but for new installs, you would uh, go to that page and then open up and you can download the source code, the web client, the database scripts, and the install doc. If you already had an existing i2b2 install and you just want to upgrade it, uh, on that same page is a link to the upgrade page, and then from that, you can just download the upgrade script and this other the required software. So, so for the new install, this is where the install guide is located. Um, there's three main components, the database component, the ITB2 software, and then the web server component. For the database, we support Oracle, Postgres, and SQL Server. Uh, and so in the demo, I'm just gonna do a Postgres, uh, a pre-existing, existing Postgres. For the ITB2 software, so previously we supported JBoss 7. Uh, the upgrade scripts still support JBoss 7, but we recommend uh, using Wildfly 10, which is the next version of JBoss. It's, uh, they renamed it from JBoss to Wildfly. Uh, Wildfly 10 requires JDK 8, okay? And then the other main component is Apache Ant for doing the build, running the build scripts and then access to. Uh, I know that uh, there's updated versions of access and ant. Uh, I mean, I've gotten to work with 1.7, uh, like access to 1.7.7 without any issues. Also, there's a newer version of the 1.9 Apache ant. I haven't tried it with the 1.10 yet. So that's why I put these, even though they're a few years older, uh, but this is what we officially support. And it also supports uh, we support um, CentOS and Windows. Uh, I know people have gotten to work on Ubuntu. Any flavor of Linux should be fine. Um, but we, uh, our, all our bamboo scripts are against CentOS. So that's what we officially say is supported. <clears throat> For the web server, the major component that you'll need is PHP. And that's to do the, uh, um, the redirection of the, uh, um, the curl scripts for going to the ITB2 web services. Uh, so if you're running on Linux, one thing to make sure is that you have curl, the client URL redirection library installed. It's a yum install curl. Um, and then PHP is just a standard yum install PHP. Um, uh, we officially support uh, PHP 5.7. Um, I it should work with uh, PHP 7. I think I've tried it out, but officially we say 5.6 uh, five, or 5.7. Five, um, for Windows, <clears throat> you can run it. Uh, it's easiest if you run it with IIS and just do the IIS install. And then if you go to uh, PHP, you can download the PHP uh, to IIS adapter, and then you can have PHP installed. I know people have run it with Apache on Windows, uh, but I find IS is just easier because it's built into the operating system. So for an upgrade script, uh, so this week uh, we can download the update scripts. We support both JBoss and Wildfly. <clears throat> when you download the zip file, it will contain the, uh, the upgraded core, uh, core software. And then optionally, if there was any database updates, there'll be a, a folder in there for the database. And if there was any configuration uh, changes, there'll be a folder in there for configurations. Uh, so for example, when we went from 1708 to 1709, we had a configuration change because we were dealing with the multi-fact tables. 
And then when we went from 17009 to 17010, there was actually a database change, so we had a couple of database scripts in, in, the, in the zip file. <clears throat> okay. So, like I said, it was a brief uh, introduction of what, what it is. Uh, now we're <clears throat> going to go to, uh, to the VM. We're going to install 1709, and then we're going to do a quick upgrade to 1710. Okay. Mike, can I ask a question um, to the group? Because yeah. um, I know you went through that that section um, pretty quickly. Does anybody? I just want, I'm just going to periodically stop you if it's okay, Mike. Does anybody have oh, any yeah. questions about um, what Mike just covered? Raise your hand, and I can unmute you. Are we good to go? Victoria. Okay, Victoria, you're unmuted. I got to unmute you too. Um, I just had a question. How popular is Windows as a server? Because our server guys really want us to switch to Windows, but um, and they really don't like CentOS. Is there a lot of support on the Windows? Um, I would say it's probably about 70, 75 to 80% Linux, and then there's probably about 20 to 25% of Windows. Uh, it works fine on Windows. Uh, I've, run, I've run it on both. so. Okay, thanks, man. Yep. And okay, one more. I know. I know you're unmuted. Camasetti? No, Camasetti? Am I saying that right? You're unmuted. Do you have a question? No? Okay, I'll put you back on mute then. All right, Mike, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so no, no other questions. Can you see this on my Windows machine? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Are we supposed to read it though, Mike? <laughs> okay, is it easy to read or should I change the resolution? No, you can't. I, I, on my, um, on my device, I can't. I can't see. It just looks like a bunch of gobbledygook. Okay. Um, can someone else? <clears throat> can they see it fine? Because uh, I don't want to go through everything, and then people just can't see it. Yeah. Can folks actually read what he has on his screen? Somebody have a hand? Like. Let me see if I can uh, do something. Let's see. Uh, new sessions. Change. Uh, Victoria, did you have something? I see a question mark. I was just saying oh. it's a little small, even on my big screen. I can I can mostly read it, but probably I'm guessing it about half the letters. Okay. Okay. How is this? Better. Much better. Okay. Yep. Uh, let me change. Uh, do a couple other changes. Hold on. Uh, terminal. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I have two folders. I have an upgrade folder and an uh, and an install folder. So. In the install folder, I pre-downloaded all the software that we need. Um, this is the Apache Ant. This is the Access 2. Uh, this is the, uh, the ITB2 Core. Um, we actually don't need this because uh, we're doing an upgrade. Uh, the database scripts and the web client. Um, I'll show you the. Oops, sorry. I'll show you the database scripts, but because uh, running the database uh, can take like. 15 minutes, uh, I'm just using a pre-existing database that's already been set up. <clears throat> and then we have the Wildfly 10. So, <clears throat> so first we're gonna unzip the Wildfly uh, into, into the op folder. By default, we, uh, let me move Apache and to. Uh, so in the op folder, 
there's usually nothing there. So I'm going to unzip root wildfly uh, install wildfly. And then quickly it unzips it, and then we have the wildfly folder. I also usually in this folder I uh, put it, uh, put the uh, Apache Ant. So Apache Ant, and then so we have Wildfly and Apache Ant. So then under Wildfly, uh, the main sections that you'll be uh, working in is the bin folder, which has stop and start in the Wildfly application server. And then the other section is in the standalone, there'll be a configuration folder and a deployment folder. Uh, the configuration folder right now just has uh, the standard Wildfly. The ITP2 software puts the uh, configurations within this folder in each cell has their own unique uh, folder. And then in the deployment folder is where the ITP2 software resides. So, um, so if we go back to our root install, uh, install. Um, so here we have the access to, you want the one that has the war, W-A-R, in it. So um, I'm just going to make a folder called A, and then I'm going to unzip the uh, that zip file in the war, in that folder. And then as you see, it has the access to dot war. What we're going to need to do is unzip that in the deployment folder. So if we go back to the wildfly, standalone deployment, and then we do unzip, root, install A, and then access to. And that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on. Let me clean up what I just did. So we're back to what we had. Um, what we want to do is we want to make a folder called itp2.war. So what I had just done is a typical thing that I see a lot on the installs is they forget to make the folder like this, and they just um, right, and they just unzip it in the deployment folder. What you should do, and what I made a mistake also, is you create a folder called itp2.war. And then in there, you unzip the files. And then at that point, uh, in this uh, itb.war folder, the main stuff that you'll be working on is in the WebIMP. Uh, this is where, in the services, is where all of the uh, itb2 AR files, and then in the in the lib is where all of the uh, the, the core ITB2 software jar files get loaded. Okay, so now that we have uh, that set up, we can actually start to unzip the uh, ITB2 software and then uh, build it. <clears throat> so if we go back to our install folder, and so this time we're going to take the ITB2 core. 9.c, so I'm going to make another folder called B, and I'm going to unzip the i2e2 core 1709 c into that, into a temporary folder. <clears throat> and then in here, we have the i2e2 core software. Uh, this, oh, it's broken down into each of the cells, so you have the CRC, the in the CRC, you got the file repository, the identity management, the ontology, the project management, the common uh, server common, which is used by all the cells, and the workplace. And then the XML folder, XML can, contains all the XSD files to uh, generate the messages going back and forth. So you start by installing the server common. So if you go into the server common, and then in here there's uh, the build properties and the build. So if we take a look at the build properties for a second, you'll see 
uh, it'll, you can change this to be, be wherever you want your uh, I2B2 software to be installed. By default, we do the Wildfly 10. Um, I know there's a Wildfly 11 and 12. I've tested I2B2 software with 11. I haven't tried it with 12 yet, but there was no issues with 11. Also, uh, you can specify what, where your uh, so where, where it's going to be installed. Remember, we created this I2B2.war. If you wanted to, you could make it. You could instead of calling I2B2.war, you could call it uh, UNH.war or what, what, whatever your institution, if you wanted to. But typically, most people leave it as I2B2.war. Uh, so, <clears throat> okay. So I'm sorry, I don't need that one. Uh, so from the install. Most of, uh, uh, most of them use the same type of install, uh, except for the uh, CLC uh, server properties. So, so I'm going to go uh, go to Apache Ant, uh, bin Ant, and then I'm going to say uh, clean. Oh, let me show you the build.xml file. So in the build.xml, uh, you have the init, which is the initial. But within each of them, they have the target name, so you can see, okay, this this is what the clean does, uh, basically removes everything. Uh, the dist uh, uh, builds it. Um, this is JBoss pre-deployment. This copies some JAR files into the uh, i2b2.war folder that's needed by the software. Um, like some of the uh, GDBC uh, and the access to uh, and the Postgres stuff. Um, so let me just run through that now. So up the patchy bin and, and then I'm going to do clean dist deploy JBoss pre, pre deployment setup. Okay. And so this is basically installing uh, the initial I2V2 uh, server components, and you should see build successfully. Okay. Um. Okay, so if we take a look at the uh, opt wildfly folder again in the standalone deployment. Uh, You'll notice now that it added all of these these jar files. Uh, these are the JDBC jar, jar files uh, that are needed. And then if you look in the I2B2 or um, WebMP lib, uh, actually, yeah, in the lib, it did add some, G, uh, yeah, so right here it added the JDBC jar file also. Okay, so. So now that we've installed the core software, we're going to install each of the subcomponents or each of the other cells. So in the PM, uh, the build.properties, properties, like if you were pointing to a different location, you would also edit this build up properties. But we're just going to do a, with the standard one. So then after patch ant, bin um, ant, and then this one uses a master build, so we have to specify instead of using uh, build.xml, use the master build, and then we say clean, build all, and then deploy. Deploy. So what this is doing, and clean is not spelled, is it's just uh, cleaning up anything that might still be there. It shouldn't be building everything and then deploying the software. So we're going to run through this one. It's building the software. And then you should see uh, build successful. And then if we take another look at the that folder again, uh, so now if we take a look at the services, you'll not notice that there's uh, the project management AAR file is deployed. So progressively, we're going to just do the same and build for each of the other folders. So this is the ontology we're building now. We should say successful. And then I'm going to do the uh, workplace. OK, should 
to you know, build successful in the workplace. Uh, so the, what I'm doing now is listed um, in the install docs. So basically, I'm following the install docs, but I've done it many times, so I'm familiar with what it is. Uh, and so the last one is the CRC, which we're going to build. So I'm just going to do the core ones. I'm not going to install the file repository in the identity management. Uh, But those would just be the same type of, well, I'll install it, doesn't hurt. Uh, so. Okay, now I just did the identity management. And then I'm going to take another look at the folders, and then I'm going to open up any questions after I show you the folders. So another build successful. So then if we look at the Wildfly standalone deployment, um, this is just now it's added all these XML files, and these are the data source files to point to the database. Uh, and then if we look at the WebM uh, services, we now have the CSC, the identity management, the file repository, and then uh, the workplace. So the software has now been officially installed. Um, Diane, do you want to see if anyone has any questions? Yeah, we have a few questions. Um, first, I just want to make sure I, I forgot to say at the beginning of this, this that um, this session is being recorded and will be available for later. Um, and then our first question um, is from Anil. Are you there? You're not. You're uh, on hi. Uh, hi. Um, this is uh, Anil. Um, actually, I'm new to I2B2. Uh, so okay. my main uh, focus was, uh, you know, using this for uh, NLP tasks. Everywhere in the documentation, it talks about a workbench. You know, so uh, in this, uh, you're planning to. Uh, you're talking about only the web server and the the web client. Can you also briefly explain uh, the status of the workbench here? and uh, is it a, a mandatory tool for uh, performing NLP task? Uh, okay, so the workplace is just another client similar to the web client. It's just a client that connects, sends back XML messages back and forth to the server. Uh, it's not required for doing NLP. Uh, there was a couple of NLP projects that was done in the past. Uh, right now, there's not an active NLP uh, project, but you could easily create uh, a plugin that does NLP, and then um, you could either use the a workbench and develop some type of plugin for that, or you can do a plugin on the web client. So either one could be used for the NLP work. Uh, no, the if so my so that leads to one question is that so already you have in one of the hive cells you already have an uh, NLP um, I, I think it you call you call it as a plugin or a cell which is already available um, I uh, which uh, works with the workbench I think I have not uh, I was not successfully uh, in running the workbench so. Uh, one question is, if there is some uh, cell which is available for the workbench, will it work as a web client or, uh, you know, you absolutely need a workbench? Um, let's talk about this after, but that NLP that I think you're referring to uh, hasn't been actively worked on in a, in a few years, so I'm not sure the status of it. Oh, okay. uh, so it some of these plugins are developed by other people, and so then we put it in like the smart cell um, is done by outside group. Uh, same with that NLP. And if they don't actively work on it, then I'm not sure if it's still working or what the software that it uses as an NLP engine is still around or whether that still works with it. But uh, like I said, we can talk a little bit more about this at the end. Uh, Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, at the end, I have a few questions related to this. If you open up, uh, it will be great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Mike. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, Diane, yeah. is there any other questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, next, let me mute. Uh, next question, Christian. 
You are unmuted. Um, I have, I didn't have a question. I think you have unmuted the wrong person. Okay, I saw a little question mark there. Okay, so thank you. I'll put the mute back on. And Victoria, I'm not sure if you have another question. Victoria, do you have another question? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. You're good. Okay, perfect. All right, Mike, you're all set. Okay, great. So let's go back to the uh, Opt Wildfly standalone deployment folder and take a look at these uh, XML files. So if we take a look at the, uh, the project management one, we'll notice that, um, so all of them will have this bootstrap DF, uh, which is where the main uh, uh, data source that it uses. So the IT producer software knows about the PM bootstrap DF and uses that. Uh, the PM is, the, is uh, the only one that only has the bootstrap and just the bootstrap. Um, and then this t specifies uh, where the URL connection. So in this e example, it's using Oracle, um, the ITPT username and the password, and then uh, right up here is uh, the location of the database server. Uh, below, uh, commented, as you can see with this, is uh, examples of how you do it with Postgres, and then how you would do it with uh, SQL Server. So if you were using SQL Server, you would just comment out the top one and then uncomment th these and then point to your uh, database where your database located uh, uh, the username and password. Um, okay. So, um, so if we take a look at another one, for example, the CRC, the same type of example has the CRC bootstrap um, but then it also has this other one, this uh, query tools demo. So every project uh, is typically going to have its own uh, data source. And so you, uh, so this is for the demo data. But if you were to have your production one, you would create some name like query tool production data source, uh, query tool production data source, and then you'd point to where that database is. And then, then you just progressively create those. Um, so, <clears throat> so for the ease of this demo and to keep it under an hour, um, I created. I've already created these DS files, so they're under root uh, install. So I'm going to copy all these data sources across. Mike, it looks like you have a question from Victoria, so I'm just going to unmute her for a second. See if okay, yeah. Victoria, hey, do you have a question? Hey, so yeah, so this looks like you're going to send everything in plain text, sort of unsecured. Do you have a recommendation for securing this so that it's sending an encrypted password or? Uh, that's actually an excellent question. Uh, we're looking at ways of making it uh, uh, making it more secure. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I agree. Right now, it's using the plain text username and password, so anyone who had access access to the physical box would be able to determine your uh, database connection with your username and password. Um, but yeah, we're, we're we are looking into ways of making it so that this is more secure, some type of authentication, whether it's uh, based on the machine or something uh, that would make it so it's more secure. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to come copying over the, uh, the XML files. And if we take a look at them now, you'll notice that uh, the project management one is using Postgres. And then the username and password. Um, and so, um, and then I just realized something. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have to edit all these files. Uh, so, this VM that I was using was actually the 1710, 
and then I blew everything away, but I kept the XML files. Uh, the XML files and uh, the did, uh, the JAR files in 1710 were updated uh, to a new newer uh, JAR file. So give me a second to uh, edit each of these files. So Postgres. Tried to save time, but I really didn't. edited each of the files now. Okay, okay so, <clears throat> so now the data source is ready. Um, the other thing is in the configuration uh, folder, <clears throat> notice we now have all these apps. <clears throat> so if we take a look at the CRC app, we'll have to edit a few of these. Uh, so we take a look at it. We'll in the CRC configuration, so we'll notice one thing is by default it's using port 9090 for the uh, ITP2 uh, for the Wildfly. So we'll have to <clears throat> specify in the, the uh, Wildfly server to point to not, use 9090 instead of the default of 8080. The other thing is in the query processor DS, uh, it's uh, defaulted to Oracle, so we need to change that to Postgres. And then the schema name is not I to be too high for Postgres as public. So let's edit these. Okay. Public. <clears throat> uh, and the rest of the configuration files sh uh, shouldn't need any uh, changes. Uh, some of these contain, uh, like where the, uh, the breakdown stuff is located. Uh, the other ones, uh, actually back in the CIC properties, is uh, if you want to change the timeout for the queuing, it's right in this section. Um, and also, if you wanted uh, the, the lockout for obfuscated users, uh, this is uh, uh, the max number of counts for lockouts. Uh, okay, and then so, so that's CSC, and we'll have to change uh, configuration for both the workplace and the ontology. So in the ontology, we'll edit that one instead of ITV2 highs. We'll do public, and then uh, the same for the workplace. We'll modify that. I could do too high. Public. Okay. So now the configuration files uh, have been modified. Now we go back into the uh, uh, the Wildfly folder, and then in the standalone the configuration folder. Uh, the standalone.xml, this specifies where uh, 
Wildfly is going to listen on. So we'll edit that. And if we do a search for 8080, uh, it's, uh, this is HTTP is listening at port 8080, so we'll change that to say 9090. Okay. So now IT2 is going to list it on port 9090. So just to make sure everything is running, uh, everything is set, we'll start up Wildfly, make sure everything gets deployed properly, and if it does, we'll set it up as a server so that when you restart your computer, it automatically will start up. Uh, so standalone, um, I want it to list on that, um, just list, uh, accept connections from anywhere, so that's why I say broadcast, and uh, it says uh, open to every, everyone. And so, okay, so fail to start. Uh, yes, uh, okay. So I, I realized I, uh, I didn't edit the uh, IM cell for the data for that JDBC driver, uh, which is actually good. So this shows you an example of uh, an, of an error. So in here, the uh, service which fails to start, and then if you look, you'll see it's the imds.xml file. So, do control C to stop, and then we go into standalone deployment, and then if we look here, we'll notice that the imds has failed. Uh, so, let me edit that one so it's, uh, so it's pointing to the right Postgres. Uh, it was right. Point to the right Postgres to let it fail. Um, hmm. I am there wrong. Mike, uh, Victoria, uh, that has a question. I'm going to unmute her. Oh, okay. Yep. Is there a question? Yeah. I, I was just going to let you know when you were editing, you you overwrote the, the closing chevron on the last, the end of the tag. That's why it's not working. I over. Uh, oh, I see. Drive right here. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks okay. <laughs> Good catch. Good catch. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> but it's useful to have a, another pair of eyes watching or 10 other eyes. Okay. So thank you. The other thing which I forgot to do is, <clears throat> as you notice, it deployed to the CRC and all of them fine, but it didn't deploy this itp2.war file. So what I forgot to do was do an itp2war.do deploy. Uh, it just, it creates a simple file called do deploy. And when the software is running, when the software starts up, it's going to see that, and it's going to deploy this ITB2 war folder. So we have our do deploy. So I'm going to go back into the bin. And then start up again. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so if you get down to here where it says uh, Wildfly full 10 dot uh, zero zero final started 690 of 1029 services, then it deployed everything correctly. And it should be, it's running, or it should be running. You can also go back and look to see if there's any like big errors. Um, I don't see any, which is a good thing. So, um, so then I'm going to stop it again and then standalone deployment. Uh, <clears throat> and now, thank you. The IM cell is deployed. And then the IP2OR is now deployed. It removed that do deploy full. Uh, file and deployed it. So, <clears throat> so while we're here in the uh, Wildfly main folder, there's uh, there's a, the docs directory. So if we go into the docs directory, 
And then there's another folder called Contrib, and then Scripts. And then in here, there's uh, we look at the README. The, this is how you would start the iTreature software um, automatic, uh, how to start the Wildfly automatically. There's one for uh, whether it's on Debian or Red Hat CentOS. Uh, we're on the Red Hat CentOS, so that's what we're going to use it in the init.d. And then in here, there's uh, the Wildfly init uh, Red Hat SH, and then the Wildfly config. So the the Wildfly init of Red Hat uh, gets copied into the strc init.d folder. Uh, I usually rename it from this Wildfly init Red Hat to just Wildfly. And so that's what this is. So it was just a simple copy Wildfly and Knit Red Hat to like so. Uh, the Wildfly uh, uh, comp file gets copied as it, uh, to, as it says, the default location of the Etsy default Wildfly. So if we copy it there um, and then there's a few changes that I did is in the Wildfly home, I specify exactly where the, the home folder is for Wildfly. Um, I also specify a user to run the software as. And then the last change that I do is in the JBoss ops, I specify that, that broadcast 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, similar to how I started it by command line, this is now saying, it's going to broadcast when it runs by default. So, <clears throat> so the last thing that I need to change before it will run as a service is right now, because I did everything as root, root owns this Wildfly folder. So if I started up as a service, and the Wildfly user of Wildfly would not be able to write to that folder because it's owned by root. So I'm going to do a simple change root or change owner to Wildfly. <clears throat> colon wildfly and then then I'm going to specify the folder <clears throat> so now that folder wildfly is now owned by uh, that folder wildfly and is owned by the wildfly so now we should be able to start jboss by just going to the service and doing start Give it a second, it should start, uh, it should say okay. And it says okay. So there will be two log files that are saved. One is within Wildfly, standalone log. <clears throat> you have the server.log, so if we take a look at that. Um, so right now it's 11.46, which is 11.46, so th this has started successfully. The other one is the council, which is under is located in var log uh, wildfly, and so this has a council log. So then you can look at the so any <clears throat> anything that's um, displayed normally in the council will be displayed in this log file. This log file is only created when you run it as a service. Uh, so if, if you start it up on command line, you will not see that file because the console is by default already being displayed. So now the IT feature software is up and running. The next thing that we'll do is we'll uh, install the web client and then connect up to the software to make sure everything's working. So if we go back to our folder, uh, into our install folder, we'll notice we have the web client right here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna unzip that. Uh, on CentOS, by default, everything's in the VOD WWHTML folder. So I'm going to unzip uh, uh, root install ITP2 web client. So now we have this ITP2 web client master. I'm just going to rename that to web client. And then within web client, the only change that we need to make is <clears throat> the ITB2 config data. We need to specify where the ITB2 is located. 
So we're editing that file and then so it's one ninety ninety. So we're saying it's on the local host on port ninety ninety. Uh the domain is ITB2 demo. This is the Harvard demo is what would be displayed. So uh, ITB2 install. install. Um, so this specifies where the project management cell is located. So we're going to save this and then uh, Gonna go. So right now, this is running. Uh, this is uh, the host of the virtual machine, so we should be able to go directly there. Uh, okay, so 192.168.30 web client. Okay. So as we see it, the host name is called ITB to install demo, and then the standard demo user. We do log in. We've uh, opened up, uh, so this is an example I like this. So because it was a pre-existing database, that's why there's a pre-existing uh, previous query in there. Uh, if we take a look at that var log uh, wildfly, if we look at the council, we'll notice that there's been some activity uh, in here. So this is, uh, it loaded up the data sources, uh, started to work on the, check to see if there was anything in the medium or large queue for it to run. Um, and so, and then this was it, initializing the CRC, initializing the CRC right here, and then initializing the, uh, uh, this is more the CSC. Uh, there's one for the uh, ontology. So, no. Further up. No. Anyway, okay. So let's just run a quick uh, query to make sure that everything's running. Go into diagnosis, drag over circulatory systems, run the query, and we should get 66 patients, which we did. So we successfully installed the software into a pre-existing database, um, run it, uh, set it up as a service, and so it will restart. Uh, so any questions right now before we jump into the upgrade? Because so I think we have nine minutes left. I don't see any hands. Oh, okay, that great. One, that one, that one. Okay. Except that I'm having a hard time. He's raising his hand, but for some reason, I can't. Um, okay. He's not connected to audio. Oh. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. There we go. Uh, so, okay. the mic, my question, are you, are you able to hear me? We can yeah. hear you now. Sorry, I am having some audio problems. Okay, so the question is, uh, I was uh, trying to work with this uh, demo database uh, which was provided. So, uh, looks like uh, there is also some URLs uh, which are uh, like there is a hosted demo uh, instance somewhere uh, because everywhere in the documentation I see various URLs. So, this demo data source which you have mentioned is a, is there an instance where you know if I don't want to you know if I want to just experiment this um, just for a demo purpose is there an instance which is available and uh, running and hosted uh, somewhere online? Uh, so, there is uh you go to www.itv2.org uh, web client, or actually software. This is where I'm saying they can get the software. 
there is the ITB2 web client demo. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in here is a demo where you can run that same type of query that we just ran. And this is run, I'm saying that demographic diagnosis. Um, So this is running on one of our servers as a demonstration and it returned the same patient count. I think I tried this and I got some uh, Ajax client uh, error. I, I'll try it again. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. That was all the questions. Okay, so I'm gonna now do an upgrade to 1710. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll shut down J, uh, JBoss, I mean Wildfly. And so PS will show you what's running. I'm gonna search for Java, and we notice that Java's not running, which is good. So go back to the upgrade folder, and then in the upgrade folder, this is the main software. And then the web client, and then we have an updated web client. So I downloaded both the software and the new web client. So I'm going to unzip, I'm going to make a new folder. Um, I'm going to unzip that upgrade. Okay, so, so in the upgrade folder, there's uh, three folders in here. One is, uh, Configuration changes, one is uh, database changes, and one is deployment. So uh, we look at the configuration uh, in the CRC app, there was uh, uh, changes that were needed for the one, let's say, uh, changes for the multi fact So we left those in, in the upgrade script, because this upgrade script can be used for uh, prior to 1709, or if someone had not done it, then we left uh, we left this in here. For, so basically, what you'd need to do is just copy this into your CRC properties file. So if we take a look at the Wildfly standard loan uh, configuration CRC um, file, and then, uh, See, we, I, we already added it, it's right here. So the query multi-fact is set to false. But if this wasn't in this file, then you could add uh, the CRC, you could add that in. Um, by default, if it's not there, it's gonna default to false. So it, it won't, the software won't uh, fail, it will just default to uh, false. Uh, the other thing is, so if we look at the database changes, uh, uh, the PM, uh, if we take a look at, uh, so we're on Postgres, so we'll take a look at the Postgres one. The, the major change in the database was in the PM user login, uh, there was a primary key specified based on the uh, user ID and entry date. Um, we noticed that if things were running at the same time or very quickly, uh, there would be some database, uh, you, we, there would be errors in the log about uh, database constraints. So we really didn't need to have the primary key there. So we removed the primary key and we just turned it into an index. Um, so that was the changes for the uh, PM. In the CSC, uh, let's see, CSC create query postgres. Um, the only, the change that we did was within the CSC, uh, we now have this uh, SQL breakdown. Uh, with the SQL breakdown, we wanted to allow it so that certain roles could only uh, use certain breakdowns. And so that's why we had to add this column user role so we can specify which breakdowns had uh, roles associated to it. Uh, so those were the database changes. Uh, and so then, uh, in the deployment, this contains uh, the software. So if we take a, uh, it has the same directory structure. Um, I like to just copy them uh, directly. I know you can do a co uh, copy cursor, but 
I prefer to I prefer to also back up what we currently have. So in the Wildfly standalone deployment, uh, I should be to web. So, uh, so this is our current one. So I'm going to make a directory in the uh, 1709C. And then I'm going to copy all of our existing files to that. In case for some reason something doesn't work, we can always roll back. Uh, and then in the lib, I'm going to copy the star called our Java, called our jar to our folder 1796. So in here we have the core ITB2 software and the AAR file. So in case for some reason the upgrade fails or this error is, we can easily just copy these back and we should be back in uh, our previous version. Uh, so now we're going to go into the upgrade folder again. Uh, going to C, upgrade, deployment, webbing, and services. So, so this is the current uh, 1710. So I'm going to copy all of these files to opt wildfly standalone deployment webbing services. And I'm going to overwrite all of them. And then in the lib directory, I'm going to copy all of these to uh, the lib directory in, uh, in Wildfly. Okay. So, off Wildfly. I'm going to start it up. Uh, on the council just to make sure everything's working. Okay. Uh, okay, so we have the started. Great. Um, next thing what I'm going to do is in our web client, I'm going to move the web client to uh, backup. So I usually use the date, but you can do what you want. Uh, and then I'm going to unzip uh, root uh, upgrade ITV2 web client. Okay, and then I'm going to move that uh, folder to web client. <clears throat> And so then in web client, uh, that same configuration file needs to be modified. Uh, can always do a diff of them. And see the changes. Um, they're, they're identical except for what we had changed earlier. So if that's the case, I can just copy the previous one. And overwrite it. Okay. <clears throat> so, because I had copied those files as root, most likely, uh, uh, standalone deployment activity to services. Oh, it actually didn't. Uh, one thing is uh, sometimes when you copy the files, uh, they might be the current user, in this case, I'm root. So, these files could have been as root, but they weren't. So that's a good thing. Um, so now I'm going to start it up as a service again. Okay. And then you can also uh, uh, look at the processes and see if Java is running. And in this case, it is. And Wildfly is currently running. Uh, right here. So now we can go back to our web client. And then I, I'm doing a shift reload. OK. Demo. Uh, Demo user. Okay. Um, and how 
know, the web client looks a little. Let me clear the cache, because uh, sometimes, because this, I don't think should be, yeah. Uh, where is our cache in here? Not, I will just use a new browser. Okay, so now uh, so this is running the, uh, the 1710. Uh, and if you go to temporal queries, it now has a new temporal query uh, uh, UI. There's also the uh, previous one if you want to use the previous one. Uh, so we uh, so we noticed that it did run, uh, did upgrade successfully in the web client. So if we run a query, same one, should run successfully. So yeah, so the upgrade to 1710, as you can see, was fairly quick and didn't require as many steps as a full install. Um, so I think I'm now out of time, but that showed a install of 1709 and then an upgrade to 1710. Can we um, open it up for questions for a few minutes, Mike? Yep. I think, um, I think uh, okay, here we go. I don't, I don't. Okay, you're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah, okay. actually, um, I have a bunch of uh, questions and I want to see, you know, uh, how many we can uh, get through it. So the, um, the first thing I wanted to ask is that it's a generic question. Uh, as I told you, I'm new to I to B2. I want to see, uh, I, I was uh, playing with this software uh, for a couple of uh, weeks and I'm trying to communicate uh, with Mike and uh, Donna Hewitt. So, now, the one thing which I try to understand is that uh, what is the, what see, is the, it looks like this is a, 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 a NIH funded project funded which the funding project ended in 2014. So what is the current state and uh, what is the roadmap and how this ecosystem e exists uh, currently? That I am not able to get a, a clear idea. If, you know, in this few minutes, if you can give me an overview of, the, of, the, of this community, it will be great. I think, uh, yeah. um, Go ahead, Mike. Oh. Go ahead, Mike. You want to answer it, Diane? You're more than welcome to. Actually, <laughs> you just... Yeah, let me um, search. Yeah. So the, the funding did um, end um, about probably, I don't know, quite a while ago. And now we're um, under a nonprofit foundation, um, the ITB Smart Foundation. Um, so there are, um, there are development groups that are that have continued to work on this and, and uh, have the foundation. Community as far as these training sessions, monthly community calls, conferences, and that type of thing. Um, I think. Have you gone to the IT to Transmart? Um, yes, I have gone to I to B two Transmart, and then I to B two Org. So it's like uh, I was not. I I did not get a, a clear idea on where it stands because you know on I to B two Org also I see activity. Uh, where the current release was there, but there were so many broken things. But uh, and then I see there is an I to be to uh, transmart dot uh, org, and I was uh, I was trying to understand what is the connection and how this thing is in the current state. Well, there's there's two separate uh, applications. One is um, the I to be to by itself, and the other is transmart. Um, so there's two um, so there's different platforms based on the, based on, uh, Transport was based on the I2B2 um, uh, software as well. Um, I mean, I'm not spending a ton of time here. One thing I would say 
are you local? Where are you from? I am. I am in uh, Silicon Valley. I'm in Cupertino, uh, okay. California. Okay. And, okay. Uh, so you're not going to be in Boston next month. <laughs> There's a no. I'll not be in uh, Boston. So quickly, let me explain my motivation. I am motivated to work on uh, bioinformatics and NLP and. There is a lot of literature refers to I2B2. It looks like it was there is a huge active community at once once upon a time, or it is there now. I don't know the status, but then there is C takes. There are so many other software. So I am trying to see if I can get more info about I2B2. Is it possible for for me to make a direct call to one of you folks and chat for a little bit? Sure, that that would be fine. I'll. Why don't you why don't you put your phone number in the chat window? Okay. Um, okay. You want me to you want me to message the phone number to you? Actually, yeah, just actually you know what your email would be better. Okay. Uh, my email is very simple. It is my first name at my last name dot com. That is Anil at Kemiseti dot com. Can you just uh, shoot me a test email? I can uh, I can send you the information. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. And like, um, like um, is there another question, Ben? Ben, he, he had his he had his hand raised and then raised. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Any other questions for questions for from folks? From folks. No. Nope. Nope. I'm just going to unmute. Let's see if I can unmute everybody. No, I can't. It doesn't seem to let me do that. Okay. All right, Mike. I think we're. Um, I think we are done. Mike, you still there? Actually, I think we lost Mike. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. Well, thank you very much for uh, for attending, and I will get the um, this recording posted as soon as uh, as soon as I can in the next few days. All right, thank you.